It's Thursday morning. It's time for another Tom and Shane video. And we're happy to have you along with us. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got my morning throat going on, Shane. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. Yeah. That, it, it sounds good. Yeah. yeah it's, my, it's my morning voice. My morning radio voice is ready yeah. to go. Frog, frog in the morning, toad in the afternoon. That's right. All right. Hey, don't forget, uh, if you're the first time here, last time here, if you've never been here, or if you're always here and you haven't subscribed, you got to do that because, well, a 50-50 chance if you subscribe, you won't be uh, killed by a buffalo or an, uh, you know, a hippopotamus or anything. So, by all means, hit the subscribe button. <laughs> Nothing will happen to you. And we'd also appreciate your monetary support. There's, there are some costs involved in putting these things up, so we would appreciate your help with that. Uh, we are willing to exchange a lot of our good knowledge for you doing that. And also, uh, we're brought to you by StreamYard, and uh, if you haven't used StreamYard before, there's a free link in the description below to uh, get over and uh, you can try it for free and see if it's something that you want to do just like Tom and Shane do. All right. <clears throat> Who controls the oceans? And uh, does anybody control the ocean, Shane? I, I don't know. You well, tell it, me. It, it, it's, a, it's defined as allocrosity. Uh, it's a Greek word. I, it, it's uh, over, you know, a couple of thousand years old. And it was, it, you know, the Greeks and Phoenicians and even the Romans made reference to it in the control of the sea lanes uh, allowed for the most trade, obviously. Um, Rome being the biggest city in Europe at the time of a million people needed wheat. Most of the wheat, uh, the Mediterranean was grown in uh, Egypt. So, uh, you know, that they had to get it home. And so that that's a deep ex example of it. But one of the reasons that today was a subject that we wanted to talk about was man's relationship to 70% of the ocean. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's what we wanted to talk about. Where is, where is this great open ocean deep est? Okay. <clears throat> so if you, if you look at uh, how, how deep the ocean is, it's, it, it's relatively uh, uh, a, a case of, greater mountain ranges and canyons and on the surface, you know, on, on the 30% of the land that we have. Um, the Milwaukee Deep, for example, is in uh, you know, the Atlantic Ocean off off the coast of Puerto Rico and, and down by Cuba. And it's also referred to as the uh, Puerto Rican Trench. And it's 28,600 feet deep. I mean, that's, you know, that's, Almost Mount, Everest, almost Mount Everest, almost Mount Everest height. That's right. There, there, there's a, there's not a deep trench in uh, the center of the uh, Atlantic, but there's a mountain range that runs down the center of the uh, Atlantic from uh, uh, the North Pole all, all the way down to the southern pole of the of the, the Atlantic Ocean. That's a, it's the longest range of mountains on the planet, but it's underwater. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's also uh, deep. It's, uh, it goes down 32,000 feet. So, you know, that range, you know, has on the top of it, uh, the Virgin Islands are on top. They're, they're, they peak out from that range. And, and uh, oh, what's that big, uh, what's that little island where all the wealthy live off the coast of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, the eastern United States? Uh, I can never, never remember the name. Out in the middle of the ocean. Uh, so that yeah, that's it. I'm sorry. I don't know. I can't think of it. A lot of Burma, <laughs> Belize. Uh, no, that's a country. Hawaii. No, it starts with it does start with a B. I have to think of it. Bur Hopefully. Bermuda. That's it. Bermuda. There you go. Yeah, the Bermuda is right on top of uh, the Atlantic uh, trench that I was speaking of. The other one, of course, is the Challenger Deep and. Um, this one, you know, is in the Pacific Ocean, and it's located uh, off of, uh, you know, the south of Japan, and and uh, mm -hmm. it's thirty five thousand eight hundred feet deep. So, it, it, you know, it's it's another one of these deep trenches that, mm -hmm. um, you know, they have been able to get down with new, you know, twenty first century remote under uh, operating underwater ver vehicles, mm -hmm. submersibles as they call them. Yeah. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know who's calling me. Yep. I apologize yeah. for that. Didn't. 
I didn't turn my phone off. First and, <laughs> um, I I do make errors, yes. Anyway, uh, the, it, it's interesting because the depression, this depression sort of was discovered by the Royal Navy. Uh, the HMS mm -hmm. Challenger, I'm sure you recognize that name, mm -hmm. 1872 to 1878. And uh, the Challenger traveled around the world, um, you know, with regards to the, the British and, uh, you know, did a lot of uh, mapping and and, and uh, f sounding, as they call it, to find depth. And so mm -hmm. man has spent the better part of 2000 years exploring the oceans, but uh, mm -hmm. we don't seem to know as much about the, the depth of the ocean or the, the big deep as uh, scientists like to refer mm -hmm. to it as, as everyone else. Uh, most swimmers, as we know, can basically uh, deal with the pressure of the ocean. That's the, the greatest uh, restriction on any real exploration um, to 20 feet. And, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you, you, when you look at the things that uh, can probably go down deep are, are submarines. And, you know, they, they can go down to 15, 1600 feet is all. So they can't go very deep. They, they, they travel well under the water, but they, they're not any, it's not something that they, that, that goes deep. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, that's certainly, uh, certainly true. Although uh, there are reports, uh, they, they have uh, submersibles, obviously, Shane, that go down to the bottom of these trenches. That's right. Uh, and uh, they found life there, uh, fish there. Uh, oh, various kinds yeah. of uh, various kinds of things down there that live in total darkness, I guess, but still manage to uh, stay alive. So um, interesting part of our uh, um, uh, of our uh, what we're talking about today. And the other thing I wanted to bring up, uh, Shane, um, can the oceans keep us safe? And by safe, I mean from warfare. Uh, obviously, Canada and the United States, um, anybody that wants to attack us other than Canada, Mexico or someone in South America has got to travel the ocean to get to us. That's um, right. <laughs> and one of, the, one of the things about China is all the islands around China make it very difficult for them to um, uh, transport any uh, uh, group of any size out of China because of all those little islands that are around uh, the coast. So. That's right. And, mm -hmm. and, you know, it, the, the, the world has seen uh, the colonization of land by mm -hmm. Europeans principally. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, colonialism was a big part of the, you know, from the 14th till the uh, 19th century. Uh, it resulted in a in great wealth being returned to Europe, but most of it was squandered, but uh, they built mm -hmm a relatively remarkable, uh, you know, continent up and, and uh, we still see and enjoy it today. The United States it came along in, in, at the end of World War II, basically, and took over from the, what was always said that the sun never set on the, you know, the uh, British Empire, mm -hmm. but now it's the United States. They have over 619 bases around the world. Uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the Navy of the United States is there's not no one even close all, you know all this stuff you hear about china china and mm -hmm. it's mostly speed boats and landing landing yeah. you know gear but you know the us has more than 70 um submarines uh, 53 of them are fast track they they replace them they're constantly replacing them they have 14 ballistic missile submarines yeah and Air, uh, aircraft carriers uh, and got, i was just going to say yeah. they have 12 different uh, aircraft carrier fleets uh, they're mm -hmm. building three more to replace them as they go along. Yeah, so the, the comparison to the United States and in, in regards to anyone else in the world is, is a bit overwhelming. Mm -hmm. it, it's quite funny that the Joint Chiefs of Staff, of course, this, this is a guy that knew more about uh, um, Afghanistan than anyone. Uh, you know, he came out this last week and said the United States is not capable of you know, uh, uh, carrying on two wars at the same time. But that's just a, yeah. that's, that's just a nomer. We've already done uh, it. Yeah. We, we've <laughs> done it before. It's not in yeah. it. You, you've got the entire infrastructure in place this time. Mm -hmm. If you, if you have to, you know, ramp yeah. it up compared to what you had to yeah. come up with in two years mm -hmm. in world war two. But, uh, yeah. it, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to look mm -hmm. at and, and basically tell people, you know that mm -hmm. the numbers are all out there. They're, you know, they're on the 
Department of Defense website, the United States Naval site, and all, they, all this information is out there. It, it isn't none of this is secret. Um, it's just that the politicians, you know, make hay of it, and mm -hmm. they use it to scare people, and uh, that's a sad thing. Yeah, yeah, that's what we want to talk about next: the politics of the ocean, because uh, uh, you know there's the uh, what twelve mile limit, I guess, off the uh, off the coast of everything. Uh, Two two hundred and fifty, actually. Yeah. I mean, the, the direct twelve miles. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> but um, all countries in the world under the UN um, have a two hundred and fifty mile uh, mm -hmm. claim. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. for for things like fisheries and and, and drilling and, so, and things like and that, drilling yeah. like that. Sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, once you pass the 12 mile limit, you're uh, in international waters for all intents and purposes, I guess, for uh, cruise ships and, um, you know, things like that. So you can go beyond the 12 mile limit and gamble on a cruise ship <laughs> uh, to your heart's content. I guess. That's right. <laughs> or, or I guess do whatever you want to do. <laughs> at least you're out of out, outside the law so well yeah i mean yeah. there's you know there's uh, four types of ships cargo container mm -hmm. um, bulk and tanker mm -hmm. and or five and then crew and cruise ships if you include include them so yeah. you know there's a there's a global fleet of over forty five thousand uh big ships mm -hmm. and that are constantly you know at sea and uh you know providing everything that, from a to z to Mm -hmm. to uh, ports and trucks and homes so yeah. there you go yeah the supply chain uh no question oceans are uh, uh, you know it's the only way we can economically do commerce with other countries uh we can't fly can't fly everything here so uh, oceanic is the uh, least expensive way to get it to us that's right but kind of you know a lot of companies uh one of the great successes that uh, Alibaba, although it's not doing well, or Amazon right now, uh, stock-wise, but I mean, as companies, they've taken and made great use of airlines, air flight, sure. to ship, yeah. sh ship packaging. Mm -hmm. But again, as you say, you know, when, it's, when it comes to cargo, food, um, different other, uh, you know, well, when it comes to size, and, when it comes to size and weight, that's uh, right. of the two. The, the two uh, things to think about um, coal and, yeah. and steel ore and and yeah, all, all these things, things like you know that yeah, yeah, yeah. they still require big boats mm -hmm. yeah uh let's see wendy uh, <laughs> what's going on with shipping so well <laughs> we 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 know a little bit about it don't we that <laughs> yeah that's right that's <laughs> they're, right they're parked for the most part <laughs> they everywhere or seem to be well, you know, there is one of the things that I do keep keep a watch on is the North Atlantic ship rate. Um, that that's set again, like out of London, like the price of oil, gas, gold, and and other other minerals. Um, they set a shipping rate, and you can determine how busy the shipping lanes are by that rate. Obviously, um, it goes as low as five hundred dollars up to twenty five hundred dollars a day for one of these big ships, and it's around fifteen hundred dollars right now, mm -hmm. um, but there are a lot of areas that, uh, that no one is going into. You know, obviously, into the Black Sea because of what's going on over yeah. there with mm -hmm. Russia and Ukraine, and a lot of hesitation. That, you know, in, into the Middle East. You know, that's always been a big concern. But you know, it's been the United States that's made it relatively quiet for you know organizations like OPEC to freely integrate their oil industries and. And move, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, finished oil products or or just raw raw oil itself, which is why it's you know the largest commodity, you know, that's mm -hmm. uh, on the planet right now. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, uh, a lot of oil traveling around, <laughs> particularly now. Uh, yes, that's right. That's, that's that's right. We don't do much of it here anymore. We have to get it from someone else. That's right. There, there's about four to five million gallons of oil a day on the water being moved or shipped somewhere. And the mm -hmm. traders pl play with this uh, all the time. Uh, we, we don't, we, what we don't see right now is that interesting, the price between the price difference between uh, Brent, which is the price on American oil and 
and uh, or West Texas and Brent, mm -hmm. in, which is set in London for European oil, including Russia. You, you know, up until uh, 2019, there was always a 10 percent difference. Mm -hmm. um, now, now they're basically trading at par, you know, with a difference of only one or two dollars, like, you know, yeah. one, one or two percent. So it's an interesting contrast what mm -hmm. uh, what uh, uh, you find that Russia's done to itself is, you know, it's basically cost itself, you know, 10 percent. 10 percent. It's lost 10 percent on the price of oil it was selling. Yeah. Mostly, of course, to Europe. But, uh, so mm -hmm. th these are the triggers that make uh, everybody um, somewhat nervous because it, it has such mm -hmm. a staggering input uh, on the global, uh, you know, supply chain, as you said. Yeah. Well, the other thing we got to talk about when we talk about oceans is plastics, uh, because uh, pretty soon you're going to be able to walk from the United States to Europe on plastics <laughs> uh, in the oceans. Uh, fish are eating it uh, and dying. Uh, you know, uh, the third world countries, uh, you know, I mean, there's whole lakes and rivers and everything that's just packed with plastic products. And until we do something, that to me is more critical than any global warming crap. Yes, it, it is. It, it's an absolute disaster in, in the context of shipping because plastic is, of course, a product, a byproduct of oil, you know, it's made from yeah. oil, but but it's very light. And, uh, you know, trying to ship something like a bottle of water in glass or metal would would be, you, you couldn't do it. You couldn't mm -hmm. afford to sell it, even though it's more expensive than gas. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a, it's a real problem. Um, and it's uh, it takes a long time to degrade. Um, is the other issue? That's right. Obviously, you know, if, uh, if we could speed that up a little bit, it would be helpful. Well, but, yeah, and, and and you know, this is this is the innovation of the time. Um, you know, you know, the uh, University of Texas in Austin announced that they had uh, de developed or are developing a type of enzyme called a hydrola hydrolas, uh, mm -hmm. they can break it down. And yeah. this, as a, the, the, the you know, the, the anagram or anchor is PET into mm -hmm. component molecules. So yeah. what they're saying is that they're, they're hoping to get this uh, looked at and approved by governments uh, because mm -hmm. right now if they, if they spray it on plastic, it breaks down. It, yeah. it just breaks mm -hmm. back, back down and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's a lot of oil at the bottom of the sea. Oh yeah, well, more more oil seeps in from the ocean, uh, the bottom of the ocean, than all That's the right. oil that's been dumped uh, from tankers and anything else. And uh, Wendy's talking about 250 years for degradation of uh, plastics. So yeah, we're that's where we where well, we these, find ourselves. Yeah, but the, the, but these new enzymes yeah. that science yeah. are developing, mm -hmm. and this is what my man's are remarkable about about mm -hmm. innovation and imagination and invention so i i think within the next five to ten years you'll see a, a practical enzyme when, when you go by for the, for the sake of argument right now if they take out a uh, gas station mm -hmm. and you see it you see it fenced in for like a year or two and you go why well if you look at all the pipes on that yeah. property mm -hmm. um th those pipes mm -hmm. are basically uh exhuming the gases because of the enzymes they put in the ground and mm -hmm. they're, they're eating up all the oil in the ground that were leaked from the tanks, you know, that the gas station has. Yeah. So, so they're clean. It's, it's not, it's cleaning up the, the property before they build on it. Mm -hmm. And this, this technology was developed over 40 years ago. So, you know, th they've been working on this for a very long time and oh, yeah. they yeah. have the answer. They just need, you know, global approval government. But of course, you know, Gee whiz, you solved the problem. Now you can't complain about it. You know, that's mm -hmm. part of politics, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a, uh, the gas station there turned into the Chamber of Commerce and they had to, um, you know, they got to fill the tanks with sand and, uh, you know, or something, uh, some chemicals uh, to uh, make sure the land is safe, doesn't blow up on you or <laughs> expand or uh, contract or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's quite a it's quite a movement to uh, get all that done. Yeah, the PET plastic, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as you said, is is a horrific thing. I've seen it on my travels. I mean, mm -hmm. oh yeah, uh, some of the places I've been to, and 
the a the absolute uh, destruction. Uh, you know, you you go to you go down to the Medi uh, Caribbean, and mm -hmm. all the beaches and all the resorts are on the, you know, the uh, uh, I guess let's see, let me think now here, be the south or or west side of the islands. Mm -hmm. Because on the east or uh, southeast side of the islands, it's all covered in plastic. I mean, literally mm -hmm. covered in plastic yeah. from, mm -hmm. uh, particularly from North or South America, principally. Not 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 yeah. the United States, but South America. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying. The third world countries just don't, you know, recycle anything or throw. No. It, you know, just just throw it throw it on the ground or throw it in the river, and pretty soon it makes its way into the. Um, you know, into coastal waterways and into the ocean. So, yeah, yeah, it's not a good thing. So, all right. Well, we may have done oceans in here, Shane. We just dove right in and took care of that. Well, uh, the bottom line is, is the, the oceans are remarkable. Uh, they're yeah. renewable. And, mm -hmm. and as you said, uh, what, what science discovered finding at the bottom of the ocean mm -hmm was this incredible existence of life in the worst conditions, which has led them to believe potentially other life can exist on other planets because mm -hmm. the pressure, mm -hmm. uh, the depth mm -hmm. and coldness, uh, the gases, yeah. uh, a lot of them, uh, mm -hmm. a lot of the, a lot of the life is around uh, 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 lava exposure from, from the bottom yeah. of the ocean. Volcanoes, the underwater right. volcanoes. Yeah. So, so the, the earth is mm -hmm. a, a, a renewable planet as well mm -hmm. as an ex, you know a, a, a living planet mm -hmm. and uh, the reason this is great that we you and i do these talks about these things is because in the future uh, people will find them at some point and they will be able to use them uh, to mm -hmm. be properly educated to yeah. understand and, and learn mm -hmm. what the real science is because uh, so many people especially mm -hmm. oceanographers oh, sorry. And, you know, and so <laughs> forth um mm -hmm. Uh, ocean biologists, it, none of them are speaking out. None of them are talking about any of this. No, uh, you, no, you, no. you don't hear any of, any of these uh, solutions to uh, this plastic problem. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's important that someone talks about it, and I'm glad you give us the opportunity to do that. Yeah, absolutely right. So, all right, that's going to wrap it up uh, for uh, this uh, segment. And uh, we've, uh, we've, of course, got to remind you, I would be remiss if I did not talk about radio on saturday that's right because we are on 8 to 11 mountain time uh go to kmmsam.com three m's in there don't forget the uh, three m's four m's actually i guess <laughs> yeah, there's four m's in there yeah kmmsam.com and uh click listen now there's no cost there's no sign up there's no email there's no uh, personal information needed you don't have to join anything all you have to do is click listen now and uh, I know what you're saying. Uh, gee, Tom, I wish I could do that, but I work on Saturday morning or, uh, you know, I got to take the kids to soccer or something like that. Well, no problem because we record all the shows and you can listen to them anytime at KMMSAM.com. Uh, we do both our radio show and these podcasts uh, are all at KMMSAM.com. Click on Tom and Shane's podcast. You can if you missed any of our shows or uh, any of the topics we talk about on radio, uh, they're all listed there. So, uh, you know, there's uh, no reason for you not to be informed uh, and enlightened uh, because we're here to help you, help you do that. <laughs> and we enjoy doing it. And we enjoy doing it. Yeah. We so certainly do. Yeah. It's a labor of love. That's for sure. All right. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Hey, don't forget to subscribe, ring the notification bell so you'll never miss another podcast we do, and like us, leave a comment. Uh, YouTube likes that kind of stuff. And we will see you on the radio on Saturday. Bye for or now.